Hello, my name is Abigail Grace or Abby and today we have a few days late my April reading wrap up. The end of April and the beginning of May was like so busy for me. Um, my sister graduated from college and I had family in town so I just did not get around to filming this when I wanted and needed to. So I'm filming it a little late but I still wanted to get it up for you guys, so that's what we're doing today. <clears throat> you guys know the drill. I'm going to go through all the books that I read, give you a rating one to five, and maybe a little synopsis. But as always, I read a lot, so in the effort of, in the interest of keeping this video not two hours long, I'm not going to obviously give full descriptions of everything, but you can find those online or follow me on TikTok, Instagram, other, I think those are the only two, TikTok, Instagram, Goodreads. If you want to see my ratings, reviews before this video comes out at the end of the month. So let's get into it. First off, we have Fangirl Down by Tessa Bailey. This was the Illumicrate um, special edition, so it has like inside um, illustrations, which are really fun. And then obviously these really cool sprayed edges. Um, I have the Afterlight subscription, so every month I get one, and so far I've liked the books that I've gotten with my subscription. Um, I have been recently feeling, wondering if I should keep the subscription, just because I get books every month, and I worry that it's just going to bog down my TBR with books that I don't necessarily get to choose. Although I did read two books from this subscription this month. So I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe that's the wrong thought process and it's just putting books that I would not have chosen on my TBR. Anyway, I ended up giving this one three stars. I have really enjoyed Tessa Bailey's books. I have not read all of them, but I've read at least four or five of her books and some I are better than others, obviously, as it goes with most people, but this one was not my favorite, although it did get me kind of into golf for a minute there. I like had no golf aspirations, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh wait, can golfing be hot? It can. Um, so that was really fun and something different. So. I would recommend this one. I think Tessa Bailey is definitely spicy, but not too bad, in my opinion. <laughs> so, we've got this first book. Then I read Bridesmaid for Hire by Megan Quinn, which was a new release in April. And I've read, again, several of Megan Quinn's books. Hers and Tessa's, I would say, are always on the spicier end of the romance spectrum but not it's definitely not like five out of five spice it's probably like three um i really enjoyed this one it was fake dating and brother's best friend which are two amazing tropes and that's always exciting for me if i love the tropes even if the book is not my favorite in other aspects, I'll rate it higher because sometimes those like little tropes, I'm just like, ugh, one bed, yes. You know, that kind of thing. So I did end up giving this one three and a half stars. Three stars on Goodreads, but in my mind it's three and a half. I like Megan Quinn, I think this is good. There's a few other books like in this series that's like connected but separate. I don't know how to explain that, but I did end up reading this month in May, now that we're in May for a few days. One of those other books by her. And I just think she is like a go-to when it goes 
when it comes to like spicy romance for me. You can always count on her to deliver what you want. Next, I read A Governess's Guide to Passion and Peril by Amanda Collins. This is a historical romance. It's England, 1869. She is a governess, obviously, and there's like a murder. All the books in this series, this is the last book in this series, it's an interconnected series. All the books in this series revolve around like a murder or a crime that was committed and there's kind of like a mystery aspect of it which is fun and different um and the mmc the love interest it is like not involved in the murder but like the person who is murdered is someone who's close to him so they kind of like work together to solve the crime and then obviously fall in love. I ended up giving this one three stars. I do recommend this whole series. I think, like I said, it's a fun twist on just like a plain historical romance because there's like a mystery aspect of it. Next, another new release that I read this month is The Rule Book by Sarah Adams. And this is like in the same universe as the cheat sheet which went super viral on tiktok and i have also read that book i liked this one more than the cheat sheet for sure it's second chance romance there's marriage of convenience there's a one bed there's a lot of good stuff here it did feel like she was throwing a lot of tropes into it that were just like did we really need all this I don't know. I did end up giving this one four stars. Traditionally, Sarah Adams has written closed door, like almost no spice romance. This one did have one chapter with spice. And she says in the beginning, like, if you don't, if you want to keep the door closed, skip this chapter and you can skip the chapter and you won't miss any of the plot. So that is good. If you don't like to read spice, if you don't want to read spice, this could be for you um because she tells you which chapter to skip if you don't want to read it and if you like a little spice there's some in here but it's not a lot obviously because it's just the one chapter so this one is four stars next i read tattered by devney perry this is the first in the lark cove series i recently read all of the Edens by Devney Perry and I had read a few of her other books and I just think Devney Perry does all of her books are set in Montana I think she's from Montana and it's all they're all small town not necessarily like cowboy but in the Edens there's a few cowboy cowboys in there this is just small town romance the tattered is a millionaire slash billionaire romance i'm not sure what he is but he's rich he's very rich and i love that <laughs> give me a rich mmc give me a millionaire please but millionaire in a small town love the combo was perfect and it's also like accidental pregnancy slash surprise baby um it's crazy. I really enjoyed it. I ha I did later on in the month, you'll see, read the second book in this series. I didn't like it as much, but I do see myself finishing this series just because I know that Devney Perry will deliver like a cozy romance with some spice, but not a lot. I would give it like a one or a two on the spice scale. It's like low. So again, if you're looking for that, Devney Perry could be for you. Next, I read Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Another new release, like so many good releases, came out in April. And this was obviously, I got it from Book of the Month. It's beautiful, but also so good. Like, it, it's up there with yours truly as my favorite Abby Jimenez book. I, I don't know which one is my favorite, but this one is up there. It is so good and truly 
Justin, who's the MMC, might be up there with my favorite book, Boyfriends of All Time. I read this for a video, so if you want to watch that video, you can see all of my reactions to this. I also read A Governess's Guide to Passion and Peril and the rule book for that video, so if you want to see more thoughts on that, definitely watch that video, but I go more into depth on this one than the other two because I like this one the most. It was five stars. Um, which I was kind of expecting, like I, I knew it was going to be four or five stars, but it really blew me out of the water and I did give it five stars. If you haven't read Abby Jimenez, you definitely should. Like you can, things to expect from an Abby Jimenez book, a third act breakup that will make you cry. Not always related to a stupid miscommunication. This book, they had a third act breakup, but it was not due to like a stupid miscommunication where you're like, what is going on? Um, like really candid and good talk about mental health, honestly. Really well represented um, in, at least in yours truly and in this one. Amazing banter, amazing MMC. Like truly, if you have not read, you need to. This is five stars, 10 out of 10. I will always recommend Abby Jimenez for people. Next, I listened to The Butcher and Blackbird, which is the first in the like Ruinous Love trilogy. It's by Bryn Weaver. And this is a very graphic serial killer romance. The two main characters are both serial killers the the sex is graphic the death is graphic the murder is very detailed and listening to it was hard at times um but let me tell you the audiobook the audiobook has two different narrators there's a male a guy narrator and a female narrator <coughs> jeez <coughs> there's like something in my throat throat there's a guy and a girl narrator and the guy has a Irish accent which his character the character in the book has an Irish accent and so obviously the narrator has an Irish accent but it is just so good I did only give this one three stars I do think it was a little bit too too much for me it wasn't it wasn't my favorite some people loved this one I was not one of them and that's okay I didn't hate it and I loved the audiobook. So if you're gonna read it, I would recommend the audiobook. And I know there's a second one coming out like maybe later this year. So will I read that one? Probably, but I'm not like holding out hope that this is gonna be my favorite books, that kind of thing. So next I did read the second book in the Lark Cove series. As I said, I read Timid. This one was a like, I don't know how to describe it. Like unrequited love. Like she had had a crush on him for years and then he finally noticed. Um, again, set in that same small town. He's a bartender. She works at a summer camp. It was cute. It was sweet. I didn't like it as much as I liked um, Tattered. Is that the first one? Yeah. I didn't like it as much as I liked Tattered. Will I continue with the series? Probably. I give this one three stars. Next, I read An Arc of Close Knit by Jenny Colgan, which I love Jenny Colgan for cozy romance. Like, they're always so... This is like kind of mom romance, though. It's like mostly women's fiction with a little bit of romance and they're always so cozy set in these like coastal towns in like Ireland or England like they're on these little islands this was an island um in the northern isles of Scotland and it follows Gertie who gets a new job as like an airline stewardess, but like for a very small airline, it's hard to describe. There's a lot of knitting 
happening. And it's a small town, so like close knit. There's like a play on words happening. It's cute. It was really good. I gave this one like four and a half stars, but four in Goodreads. I love Jenny. She's always has like a very relatable and quirky heroine and really interesting side characters. Yeah. Those are my thoughts on Close Knit. I was kind of trying to glance at my notes because it's one of those things where it's so hard for me to articulate my thoughts whenever I think back on these books. So you have to write them down right away, otherwise they leave my mind completely. Next, I read Dust Storm by Maggie Gates, and this was a cowboy romance. It's single dad, and it was set in my hometown. I was shocked and appalled when they said the, set, the city that it set in is Temple, which is like where I grew up or like the adjoining city to where I grew up. And like all the city, they're talking about like the surrounding cities and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is my home. It's crazy and so fun. So loved that for that reason. This is the first in a series and the other books have not come out yet but I'm excited to continue the series. You know, I love a cowboy romance and I have only good things to say about Dust Storm. I gave it four stars. It wasn't amazing, but it was really good. And I love a single dad and he's such a good single dad. Like it makes someone so much hotter if they're like a good parent, shocking. So give that one four stars. Next, I read A Fragile Enchantment by Allison Saft. This was the YA book club pick for Barnes & Noble. So that's why I got it because I saw that they had picked it for their YA book club. Also, look at these end papers. Very pretty. The whole premise of this is that there's some, there's like a magic system kind of and the main character, she had her like magic is that she can imbue emotions into the clothes that she sews. She's a tailor and she gets hired by the Prince Regent to create the outfit that his brother, the other prince, is going to wear for his wedding. And so she goes and of course there's a romance and there's some like intrigue. I did not love this book. I was in fact disappointed by it and maybe it's because when in the fantasy genre I've kind of moved past YA like I expect more from a fantasy because I I want it to be an adult fantasy and it's just not it's simplified because it's for YA and that's fine but I'm just I think not the target audience for that anymore which is sad because I love some of my favorite like YA fantasies, hold a special place in my heart. But I think if I had read them for the first time now, I wouldn't love them as much. And this was an example of me like picking up a YA fantasy and deciding it's just probably not for me anymore. I gave this one two stars. That doesn't mean it was mess bad. Like some people will probably love this book, but I didn't. And I'm not gonna recommend it to like people who like fantasy like if you like Akatar and like fantasy this is not gonna like at least for me it, it did not <clears throat> give me the feeling that I like having from fantasy books so two stars for that one next I read Next to You by Hannah Bonham Young this was recently republished. She had independently published it and it just got traditionally published by Del. And the main character is fixing up a school bus for her to like live in and the MMC helps her. It's he falls first, he falls harder. She has some like things that she's working through 
and she thinks that they're just like it's just a fling like she's not going to develop feelings it's fine lo and behold she does um it was really good and i think hannah consistently does a good job similarly to abby jimenez of talking about like mental health and other issues like more serious issues in such a well done way out on a limb which is also by her is one of my favorite books ever it is five stars it is so good i can't wait for that one to get republished it's just also by her so good and i had read next of kin also by her and i did not love that one that much i gave that one three stars but this was like somewhere in between those like not amazing and i think about it all the time but not eh i gave this one four stars as it falls between yeah four and five or three and five four next i read ruthless vows by rebecca ross yep rebecca ross this is the second to divine rivals which i read last year and then i was so excited for this to come out and then of course i did not pick it up right away it came out in december and i didn't end up picking it up until april and I think I was feeling uh, trepidation going into this after having read A Fragile Enchantment and really not enjoying it. But this one was very good. I do think I enjoyed, I think I gave Divine Rivals five stars and this one was four stars for me. It wasn't as good as Divine Rivals and there was parts of it where I was like, uh, oh, this feels kind of slow. But in the end, I think it had a really good ending. I think the world is really interesting. We got to see more of the like fantasy parts of it in this one than the first one. The first one didn't really feel like a fantasy. It just felt like a romance. So that was fun. We got to see more of that in this. So I enjoyed this duology and now it's done. I don't know if I would have had the energy to continue with this series, but I liked it for what it was. I I think it's a good series and I would recommend it to people who are looking to get into fantasy because it's a very easy world to get into and understand. And yeah, all of those things are true and I have no more thoughts to add. So this one was four stars. Next, I read Well Traveled by Jen DeLuca. This is the fourth in her like well met series they are all set around the renaissance fair and i actually accidentally skipped the third one so i read the first second and then thought this was the third one but it's actually the fourth one but as romances go i don't feel that bad about skipping the third one i do still think i can go back and read the third one and i won't feel like i've missed i'm like out of the story loop so Whoops, that's my bad. But also, this one was very good. I have enjoyed this whole series. The first one I think I gave four stars and I liked that one the most. The other ones that I've read in the series, I think I gave both of them three stars. This one I know I gave three stars and I think I gave the other one three stars as well. I think the setting of the Renaissance Fair is so interesting. It's something I hadn't read about before and now I'm like, I need to go to the Renaissance Fair it seems like there's hot men abundantly at the renaissance fair i don't know if that's true but jinda luca is making me think it's true so and this is like reformed playboy very good okay next we have the highly anticipated funny story by emily henry this is my special edition afterlight exclusive version just because it was on top and funny story was like under a pile i did not feel like getting it out so this is not the cover that the u.s editions have on them this is looks like the it is the uk cover but it has some additional fun elements which i will show you so the we have all these again illustrations of this is um what's her name Daphne. <laughs> this is Daphne reading story time at the library and this is Miles listening. And then in the back we have them 
at the beach. And then also if I take off the dust jacket, we have them splashing in the water after they kayaked for sunrise. So lots of fun illustrations and of course, sprayed edges. And it's just beautiful. Now I have three editions of this. I have the regular US cover. I have the regular UK cover, which is signed. And then I have this exclusive edition, which has all these fun illustrations. Needless to say, I went a little overboard on buying editions of this book, but I always do that with Emily Henry books. I have like three editions of each book, but I don't care. It's good. I gave this one five stars. <laughs> it's the plot is so funny and different, like something I would never have thought of and I haven't seen before, which I loved because there's only so many things you can have happen in a romance book. And this one gave me something different. And I appreciate that from Emily. I, Emily Henry is an auto buy. I will always buy her books. I have really enjoyed all of her books. Some I like more than others. I did have trouble when assigning the rating for this book. I have a whole full spoiler reading vlog up on my channel. So if you want to know like all of my thoughts, go watch that video because I really talk about how I felt. But I did end up giving this one five stars, even though I don't love it as much as book lovers and beach read. Oh my gosh, sorry. What's, I don't know what's happening with the lighting, but it was still five stars, I think. So, <sighs> Emily Henry, I love you. And this was, this was good. Next, I read The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata. Some of my favorite like booktubers love Mariana Zapata and specifically love The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. I have read From Lukov with Love and Wait For It. And now I've read this one and I will continue to read some of her books. The thing about Mariana Zapata that you might or might not know, she always has like a super slow burn. It's not until probably there's this much left in the book where they kiss for the first time. Like it is truly, like you know they're gonna get together but Aiden is just so grumpy. Like, mean but I still love him <laughs> I don't know and Vanessa is it was just it was so good and he's a football player she was his personal assistant and then they there's a marriage of convenience plot that happens it's just it's so good and I gave this one five stars kind of unexpectedly I gave Luke from Lukov with love five stars and I gave wait for it for sorry I ran out of time on my SD card, but we're back. I gave her other books four and five stars. So it stands to reason that I would enjoy this one as well, but I was still shocked when I ended up giving it five stars. I really enjoyed this one. And she is publishing these, republishing these with like different covers and a traditional publisher. So that's exciting. I love it when books that have been indie published to get picked up by a publisher and get to get republished. Next, I actually listened to Emma by Jane Austen. I, if you remember from my like book wrap up that I did at the end of last year, I talked about wanting to read more classics. And so in the interest of trying to hold myself to my word, I read Emma. And I love Emma. I've seen the movie many times and I think it's so well done. There's so many good versions. There's a Gwyneth Paltrow one is good. The one with um, Anya Taylor-Joy is good. So I, I knew the plot already, which I think is helpful when going into like something like this that's a little bit more flowery in language. But... I, and this one's thick. This was a long one. I think it's longer than Pride and Prejudice, although I can't say for certain. And I, of course, got the beautiful Penguin and Bloom editions that they've been coming out with. So it's just stunning. And then on the back it says, it is such a happiness when good people get together. And I just love this 
edition. And so of course I also bought Pride of Prejudice in this edition and Sense and Sensibility in this edition because I've read those. And now I have all three of the Jane Austen books that I have read in this edition. So it's just encouraging me to read her other books so that I can get this pretty edition and complete the set. But I recommend, I love Emma. I gave this one, what did I give it? Four stars. I think Pride and Prejudice is still my favorite Jane Austen, but this one is up there. I liked it more than Sense and Sensibility. Um, so, and Mr. Knightley is a king. He's a king. Like, yeah, not as great as Mr. Darcy, but he's up there. Then, because I was in like a Jane Austen mood, I read Eligible by Curtis Steinfeld. She wrote Romantic Comedy, which came out last year. It was a Reese's Book Club pick, but this is a modern Pride and Prejudice retelling. And let me tell you, all these characters were super unlikable which just like puts into perspective how the characters are in the original Pride and Prejudice. Like they're unlikable characters. Miss Bennet, super unlikable. Like honestly, so annoying. All of the sisters, except for Jane, completely annoying. Mary is rude. Like Kitty and Lydia are toxic. It's just, <laughs> And when you put them in a modern time, it like exacerbates that about them. And you realize this is horrible. <laughs> I hate these people. <laughs> Mr. Darcy is like all high and mighty. And again, you don't like him at the beginning, but he's just like, and even Lizzie at times, I'm like, girl, you are really hating on Mr. Darcy for no reason. He is being nice to you. <sighs> Anyway, it did elicit strong emotions from me and I love Pride and Prejudice. I gave, but in good conscience because of how much these characters drove me crazy. I felt like I couldn't give it five stars. So I did end up giving this one four stars, but I would recommend if you like Pride and Prejudice, I thought this was a fun retelling and it's really true to, as true to the original as a retelling can be. And like, the, all the plot points are still there. So I recommend, and it was funny. There's like a um, reality TV plot line that is like so interesting and funny. Like Mr. Bingley was on reality TV, like a bachelor type show. Anyway, it was funny and different. And I gave it four stars. Next, I read the arc of Not Another Love Song by Julie Soto. This is her sophomore novel. And I believe it comes out in the fall, although I'm not sure, let's check. Oh, it comes out in July, even better. But I of course wrote a full review because I had to turn in a review for NetGalley. So I'm just gonna read it off to you. I said 4.5 stars, Julie Soto does it again. I devoured this in less than a day and, I, and was anxiously awaiting for Alex and Gwen's story to unfold. I admit that I don't know much about classical music and composition, but I felt like I stepped into that world and learned a lot about it. Gwen was not a typical heroine. She was soft-spoken and timid at first, but as she developed and blossomed, I love the person I got to see come through. Very, very good. Um, as I said, it's about classical music. She is a violinist and he plays the cello for like a cello a classical music rock band, if that makes any sense. I don't know, it's very interesting and I loved it. It also kind of felt like a fan fiction because it's like he's famous and she's been obsessed with him for years and then meets him and they like start dating. And it's like, when is the famous musician that I've been obsessed with for years gonna show up and we're gonna start dating? That feels like a fan fiction to me because it cannot be true. So I loved that like fun part of it. And I would highly recommend, I can't wait to get it whenever it comes out. Next, I read What Happened to Helen Rochester. This was like a Gilmore Girls, not Gilmore Girls, Gossip Girl romance slash murder mystery. It's like set in Nashville, which is fun because if you don't know, I live in Nashville. 
and it's like the kind of like society elite. One of them gets killed and her friends kind of get together to try and find out who did it. And there's all these secrets and all these like things that unfold. And it's fun that it's set in Nashville, for me at least. It's only on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle Unlimited, you should check it out. Um, and Claire Gilmore, I really have enjoyed her stuff. She only has one book out and I actually just got approved to get the arc of her second book, which is coming out in the fall. So I can't wait to read that and tell you all about it next month because I'm sure it's going to be amazing and I can't wait. Oh, I gave What Happened to Helen Rochester four stars. Next, I read The Burnout by Sophie Kinsella. This is... I feel like kind of similarly to Jenny Colgan's book, it's like fiction, just literary fiction, but there's a romance plot in there. The main character gets super burnt out at work and has kind of like a breakdown at work. And so she decides to go on a vacation to a place where she grew up going on vacation. And, but it's like winter time so it's not really it's a beach town and there's like no one there it's completely deserted and the hotel that she's staying at is kind of run down and there's like only two other people staying there and one of them is a guy who also got burnt out at work and is there to kind of recover and so they become like burnout buddies and try and help each other come back from their burnout and of course a little romance sparks but it was really good and I would recommend I just randomly picked this out because I like the cover of it at the bookstore and lo and behold turned out to be good sometimes you can judge a book by its cover and this was one of those times I ended up giving this one four stars and finally for this month I read The Kiss Countdown by Etta Easton this was again one of my subscriptions from Illumicrate at the Afterlight exclusive so it has some really pretty sprayed edges and there is, of course, in paper designs, which I will show you. But the main premise is he is an astronaut and she is an event planner. There's fake dating and she needs a place to live. And he's like, just move into my spare room while we're like, dating it'll make it more believable and then you can save on rent you're helping me out so let me help you out by this um there's of course like a one bed moment and as i said he's an astronaut which is just like so amazing and i believe this is a debut oh she lives in central texas hmm, i wonder where she lives that's where i'm from anyway <laughs> This was good and I never would have picked it up if I hadn't gotten it from my subscription box. So I ended up giving this one three stars and can't complain about it. Those are all of the books that I read in April. My camera battery is about to die so I'm going to wrap it up quick. Thank you so much for watching and if you liked it, give it a like, subscribe, come back for more videos and I will see you guys in my next one.